Her name is Olga Romanova. The person who is dead, who will be dead, will take that to your grave. To avoid any confusion, the Olga Romanova who you will see as the 26-year-old medical counter assistant at the department store is not Olga Romanova, the executed Tsarina. I don't see her in either light. We both know it isn't Olga Romanova, the executed Tsarina. She's officially dead. We know that doesn't always count for everything because I'm dead. We can agree that you've been told twice that I'm dead or in prison. Possibly I died in prison. If I'm willing to die here, I might have taken my life in prison, you suppose. I'll tell you that you would suppose wrong, because taking my life in prison like that is not the same as this. In fact, you should know that were I to have died in prison, there is no way that it could have been me then. There is a difference between the two, between me taking my life in prison there and us rehearsing the taking of the lives here. There are rulings and decisions that you're involved in. You're taking responsibility for all of it. You are acting, singing, dancing, and sometimes talking your way through it. You have the super secret passport ready and you're doing nothing, staying silent on the whole with your lives passing before your eyes and some of you are dead already, and the guy on stage talking at you is dead already, so you've been officially told. So in the moments before Olga and Minerva enters, nothing has been happening for quite some time. Nothing has happened since the acting and singing and dancing stopped and the curtain came down on the theatre and a man stepped on the stage firing a gun and then the acting was the best he'd ever seen and the theatre was the most gripping it had ever been. It was terrific. The moment the illusions were shattered it was everything you could desire from a show and its utter disbelief. More precisely, in the time between the theatre being blown away in disbelief by what was actually taking place and this actuality being registered by you, everything was perfectly executed. The look of fear on the actor's face, the terror in the rigid bodies of the dancers, and the way the orchestra suddenly stopped playing as if surprised because they were surprised, was electrifying performance. The first half had left you sad and the sandwiches were expensive, so you considered going home because you were tired, and the show was long, lasting from 1913 to 1943, but early in the second half, shortly after the interval with its overpriced consumables, this woke you up, this made you sit up straight in your seat, this widened your eyes, got your heart racing, got your nerves firing, it straight to the bone and you thought, what a trendy theatrical concept. When the man stood on stage and actually fired his actual gun with an actual bullet, and the actors were actually afraid, and the dancers actually terrified, and the orchestra's actually stunned by surprise, you thought, what a trendy theatrical concept. That right when the theatre was blown away, it reached the zenith of possible achievement in your eyes, heart, nerves, and bone. And then there was the disbelief that is left with your life flashing before your eyes and your family sat next to you, still terrified with nothing going on for quite some time. Your life has been flashing before your eyes, but slowly for quite some time now. It might be 11pm on the same night as the show, or 3am the next morning. Either way, those would both constitute quite some time. But we know that the young woman who is about to enter does it at either 11pm or 3am. And your life has been flashing before your eyes for quite some time now. But she will enter only once. It isn't that the woman enters at 11pm and then again at 3am. It is that the woman enters at 11pm or 3am. It has to be quite some time that nothing has gone on because the young woman, quote, enters suddenly. Look, the script says suddenly a young woman entered. It doesn't name her. It doesn't say suddenly Olga Romanova entered. Perhaps it doesn't want to cause confusion. 
Perhaps it doesn't want reconstructions. Turf say Ogoro Minerva, the young Tsarina, executed in 1917, suddenly turning up in 2011 in this moment that happened in 2002, during a play set between 1913 and 1943. We can all understand how the time of the play, 1913 to 1943, might permit the entrance of the young Tsarina Ogoro Minerva and possibly represent the night of execution. But that wasn't in the show that you acted in, danced in, or sung in, or merely paid to come and enjoy. But between Olga Minerva, who you see as the 26-year-old perfume counter assistant from a department store, and the executed Tsarina, there's at least some grounds for understanding why when the young woman enters the auditorium claiming that the man on stage holding the gun is a clown, that this is all a masquerade and asking you why you are still in your seats before demanding that you all get out, get out now. I am suspicious. You can understand, establish some common ground between me and the actor dying on stage, and you, the audience, as to why I might not think that she's a perfume counter assistant at all. We might agree that she looks 26, but I don't know any kind of perfume counter shop assistant that having watched this on television, Having seen me holding you against your will, despite you having paid to sit in those very seats and be subject to a play about advancements in polar aviation, circa 1913 to 1943, with some mention of the revolution, the civil war, the world war, the other revolution, the other civil war, and the other world war, having seen that there are children and pregnant women and Muslims not wearing bomb belts and internationals including the Swedish diplomat among you who will die. She has seen you next to your family, she has seen the guns, the range of mountains, the wolves, the bomb belts and the black widows. We ever walk in here on my birthday like she owns the place. I don't know any of the makeup country assistant who would do that even if they were drunk, and only maybe if they were crazy. And we can watch her in the TV news network cameras, walking across the car park, trying the locked doors and walking into the theatre. She walks through the military, the police and security cordon, but she fucking owns the place. We can watch her, just like the theatre camera saw the man walking on stage and shoot the gun, and the dancers stopped and the singing stopped and the acting was perfect. And the bullet hit the ropes, and the ropes dropped the curtain onto the theatre as bomb belts, wolves, black widows, and a range of mountains took to the stage, and the actors became audience, and this audience became a different kind of hostage to a different kind of fortune, fate, or whatever arbitrary conditions may lead to the eventuality of their death, for which they have a super secret password, and in turn we are reminded in this rehearsal of the reconstruction may be the very death that you are called upon to perform. We're in this together. We're sharing the responsibilities and switching roles. I'm audience to your acts. I've seen you talking to the women strapped to the bomb belts. I've seen you stare with your life slowly flashing before your eyes. Shuffle in your seats, sneeze, sleep and snore. You're all going to snore like a bear, like a whole clan of bears. The auditorium is going to be filled with a whole load of snoring later, much later, and some of you will choke on your tongues, and others will wake up and be told happy birthday before you finally walk out like the young makeup and perfume counter girl told you to. But as I've been saying, she's not a makeup and perfume counter girl at all from my perspective. From my position here over the range of mountains. No. From my perspective, the claim that Olga Romanova works in the department store is a cover. It's a role. She's a made up makeup counter assistant at the two department store. Whilst really, she's working for the Federal Security and Counter Terrorism Bureau, also known as the FSCTB. Olga Manova is widely believed to be an FSCTB agent, but more pertinently, she is believed to be an FSCTB agent by me. 
You will look in disbelief at an apparently young beauty counter assistant from the Etude department store appearing drunk and suddenly appearing here asking, Why are you still sitting here? Calling me a clown and declaring this a farce and some kind of a masquerade, but in establishing some common ground here it is easier to see. Easier to grasp why I see her as an FSCTB Asian provocateur sent in here to shake things up. It is in these terms that you need to understand that no sooner had she walked in through these doors with her hips swaying like she fucking owns the place than I march her out of those other doors and shoot her dead. I shoot her and it's at this point, it's at this point that your perspective of me breaks down. I shoot her all the way to her virtual grave and everything we've established since the curtain came down is lost. We'll have plenty of time to think about this later and for those of you who survive to relive this moment, to replay it and revisit it as if there will always be a part that escapes sense and making sense of the experience. Sometimes Augur and Minerva will be a 26 year old made up makeup counter assistant. And at other times, you might think that she was just let in here to shake things up a little. But regardless of this, she will be the first execution and death. And with the sing of all that will make you no longer want to sing, no longer want to dance, and no longer want to act. Or you will step out of high heels and onto broken glass. You will walk on red carpet and sing of the brevity of mortality and how you've been deprived of your right to a normal life.